And, uh, and I have to say, whenever that issue of IQ and race comes up, I get pretty angry and pretty pissed off and upset because I, I think uh, tying the two together in any meaningful way, tying to get th the two together in any way that has any practical importance, any meaningful value, is is ridiculous is uh, uh you know in many cases racist and uh and just silly it's just silly because individuals should be judged as individuals and the question is is the individual in front of you smart given the the role that he has to play and iq so one of the things i said during that period is i said that i said something about iq is irrelevant and an insignificant uh, measure and it's true I do believe that in evaluating, I do believe that as a, a measure applied to groups, it is irrelevant, meaningless, and stupid. But I probably misspoke. I probably exaggerated the point when applied to individuals because I was so ticked off at the attempt to use IQ to, in order to further a kind of a, a, a racist agenda. Uh, yeah. I mean, IQ, it turns out, has some pretty significant predictive powers over people's performances. Statistically speaking, doesn't mean anything with regard to particularly individuals and their abilities in the future. But in terms of predicting, statistical prediction, IQ is a good predictor of success. High IQ people tend to do better than low IQ people in life, in school, in other things. IQ is a measure of intelligence. It's one measure uh, of a certain type of intelligence. And, I, you know, I've done some research on this. I am certainly no expert on this. And, and most of the people talking about this issues are not experts. But um, from what I can tell, from reading the literature, from actually going and reading scientific literature on IQ, I can say a few things. One, IQ is one measure of intelligence there are others. And there's a big debate in the scientific community in terms of the mind and uh, the, the biology of it and what we're measuring when we measure IQ and what is intelligence and what are the components of intelligence. And one article here that says there are five different measures and IQ is just measuring one. I, you know, I don't know. And my suspicion is, and I'll, I'll get to this when I talk about the evolutionary biology, evolutionary psychology topic as well. My, uh, my strong suspicion is very high probability on this one. No certainty, but a very high probability that we know we, and I include in the, we scientists and psychologists and people who do the tests and people who evaluate the test know very little about the components of intelligence and uh, and what is biological and what is cultural and what is social and what is hormonal and what is nutritional and all these different components we know some things but in the big scheme of things this is still an area of uh, of scientific exploration that it's still in its relative infancy and it's complicated because you're dealing with human beings you're dealing with a mind you're dealing with free will. You're dealing with an, the most complex biological thing in the universe, as far as we know, the human brain. And it's dealing with the influences on the individual from culture and society and everything around him on top of the biology, on top of what I think is the most important issue, which is free will. So if you take all those components and then you say, well, free will, uh, y y what is it? IQ is 100% genetic. I say BS, nonsense. You don't know that. And there's tons of evidence in the literature, this I've read up on, that that is just not true. So there is, um, and this relates to race stuff, there, is, there are studies of um, uh, tr uh, transracial adoption. So white couples adopting a black kid, black couples adopting a white kid. Uh, primarily, it's black kids being adopted by white parents. And IQ goes up significantly because the, based on things like socioeconomics, based on things like education, based on things like the culture that the child is exposed to. 
So they, it is clearly not. They've done twin studies about this. They, they've, they've, they've taken kids out of certain environments, as I said, and put them in different environments. And you see sharp increases in IQ. There's also the whole question of what is IQ exactly measuring. So the whole issue IQ, while it does statistically correlate with certain outcomes and is interesting, and I'm sure psychologists can use it and, and, uh, and, and maybe even can be used in employment decisions and things like that. The idea that we understand what it means completely or the idea that we understand the relationship between IQ test and intelligence. And what is intelligence? How do you define intelligence? The ability to solve what kind of problems? These are still issues in the science of, of the mind, science of the brain, uh, issues that probably that, that psychology and, uh, or, and, uh, and biologists are going to have a lot to say about, not to mention the, the question of the extent to which free will impacts IQ. And that is, if, and this is pure speculation, this is Euron Brook just speculating off the cuff, right? To what extent does somebody taking ideas seriously, taking knowledge seriously, taking his mind seriously, actually impact his intelligence? Um, and, and all of those factors, taking stuff seriously, all factors of free will, of choices that one makes. My point is that we know very little. <laughs> and we shouldn't pretend to know a lot. And we shouldn't make definitive statements about these things. And uh, particularly if you haven't really studied it and if you aren't really an expert in the field. And I am not. So I'm not going to make definitive statements about this. But let me, let me, uh, so let me say... How to measure intelligence, I don't know. The literature seems to be uh, conflicted about this question, and there seems to be a lot of data that suggests that measuring intelligence IQ test is not enough to really measure intelligence. Um, there's a lot of evidence that uh, how you're brought up makes a difference. Culture and, and uh, the, 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 the home environment that you brought up makes a difference in IQ. Uh, I'm suggesting that free will, whether you engage to the extent that you are focused, plays a role ultimately in the level of your intelligence. Now, I want to relate this to race. So first, I would say this, um, and I think I said during the show, I don't really care about race. Race is irrelevant, and race, for all intents and purposes, doesn't exist, right? So if, uh, you know, I'm just going to use, and, and I differentiate here between race and genes. Genes are really, really important, right? Particularly for disease, particularly for uh, certain attributes. Genes are really, really important. Genes are what determine the color of my eyes. Genes uh, have, have determined um, my height, probably, although nutrition probably plays a role there as well. Uh, that's why human beings have become taller over time as we become richer and, and eaten better. And... Uh, you know, genes play a role in my health. It turns out it looks like, again, we know very little, unfortunately, about these things. Uh, it, it, they, they play a big role in health. And um, so I'm not against looking at somebody's genes and, and, and uh, you know, particularly when it comes to health. So somebody criticized me about how can you say there's no such thing as race when there's certainly genetic differences between people? Yeah. Every single individual has genetic differences. And it's true that since some of us share certain genes, we're more likely to have certain diseases. So I share certain genes with a lot of uh, people who identify as Ashkenazi Jews. So when, um, you know, one of the relevant questions to ask me when I go to the doctor with a stomach ache is, are you an Ashkenazi Jew? Because is, what's the probability you have the genes that cause a particular disease that cause stomach ache? It's a bad disease, so you have to deal with it quickly. The fact that I'm saying race is irrelevant, the fact that I'm saying race doesn't really exist, the fact that I'm saying race is, in, 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 in a sense, a construct, it is a construct, that doesn't mean I'm ignoring the fact that we're genetically different and the fact that groups of us have overlapping genomes and that there's value in knowing 
those overlapping genomes. But you know what? I, I did one of these gene things and, you know, where, where you spit into a tube and they tell you uh, what diseases you're susceptible to. And they also tell you where your heritage is. And on my father's side, I have this Q something g snippet, gene snippet. I don't even know what it means. And this, I share this with people who lived in Siberia a long, long time ago. And it turns out that those people split up and many of them went and crossed the Bering Straits and are now in Latin America and Central America, Northern America, the, the American Indians. So it turns out that based on that, I have a huge amount in common. I have actually more in common with American Indians than I do with Europeans on my father's side. Now that's all BS irrelevant to anything. It's kind of interesting. It's kind of cute. And maybe it's relevant to some diseases that might have gone through the genetic code in those snippets it's not relevant to anything in anybody's life. It's not relevant to any decision one would ever make about anything. So treating, you know, the, the, the fact that uh, certain groups uh, score lower or higher on any particular test, you know, is, is irrelevant as a group. The only thing that matters, and I don't know why you even slice the data based on the group. The only thing that matters is you. Are you qualified to do the job I want you to do? Are you smart enough? Are you productive enough? Are you energetic enough? Are you, you know, good at math enough? Or are you good at verbal stuff enough? Whatever. Whatever it happens to be. Do you know the skill set that I need to hire you? That's it. What your color of your skin is, what your genome is, who cares? It's irrelevant. And therefore, race is irrelevant. And the only thing that makes race relevant is people who choose to do so. Right? Who choose to do so. Which means racists, whites who want to enslave blacks, or whites who want to treat blacks as inferior, or blacks who want to treat whites as inferior or just want to treat whites badly because they feel like even their ancestors were treating unjustly in the past or whatever. Race should have nothing to do with human decisions. And therefore, it's irrelevant. And any discussion of it, yeah, it's a, what do you call it? A social construct. Call me a lefty. Go ahead. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes, 